For today's video, I'm gonna take some Dollar Tree items that I collected in my last video. If you wanna check that out, do a little shop with me and a haul, I will leave that linked in the description box. But if you wanna see the DIYs that I am making from those items, then just keep watching. So for this DIY, I'm gonna grab this little house and this fabric, both came from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna start by just kind of rough tracing the outline of the house on the fabric. Now, this is going to be cut down quite a bit until I can get it to fit inside the house. So I just cut that out, and then I will lay that fabric back down onto the house, kind of figure out where I need to trim it. It doesn't have to be perfect, because I am going to be fraying the edges. Once I get it roughly, the shape that I want it I'm just going to go through and pull out a whole bunch of strings on all the sides to give it that frayed look now once I have that done I am going to take some Mod Podge and I'm going to put that all over the back of my house and then I add my fabric to the back of the sign Now I'm gonna take this little round, this is actually from Chocotour. It's one of their little round chip pieces and it was the perfect size for this DIY. So I grabbed this, I'm gonna take some Folk Art Italian Sage paint and I gave this about two good coats of paint. I'm gonna take one of these transfers that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I cut out this little B inside of the wreath and added that to the center of my round and I just used a popsicle stick to rub this on here. Now the trick with these ones is that you have to hold down that paper really nice and tight so it doesn't go sliding around and just go around your entire thing. It does transfer on pretty easily, which I was impressed with. And then I just glued that to the middle of my sign and that's it for this DIY. Super simple and easy and I thought this turned out adorable. For this DIY, I'm gonna take these 12 inch wooden planks that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I picked up four of these and what I'm gonna do is cut off the ends, trim them down because they weren't all the way even and some of them had pretty rough ends. So I took this out to my miter saw, cut those ends off and then cut each of them in half. So you are going to have now eight pieces instead of the four and you're just going to try to get those as even as you possibly can. So I am just going to remove all those stickers and then we are going to make a little planter out of this. So so what I'm going to do is take two pieces, some E6000, and then I attempted to get these to stick with just the E6000 and some gel super glue. It didn't work very well. And I didn't want to use some hot glue in between each of the wood planks because the hot glue doesn't allow it to get completely flat together. You kind of have some spaces in between there. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. So in the end, I ended up taking some popsicle sticks and cutting them down and gluing them on the back seam so you wouldn't see it on the outside and there wouldn't be any gaps in between those planks. And that helped keep these together much better. You are going to do this for all four sides of your crate. Now to attach all of your sides together, I took some Jenga pieces from the Dollar Tree, added them to each side, and used those to help glue down each side to each other, just to give it a little bit more surface area and to help add some support to each side. So I would just add my side, get that little Jenga block, add some glue, and attach the Jenga block to both of those sides. And you're just gonna do that for all four sides. Now I have these quarter inch dowels that I actually got in a big pack from Lowe's, I believe. Melissa from All Things Crafty did this on a toolbox and I thought it turned out absolutely gorgeous. So she inspired me to add these dowel pieces to the front of this crate. I will link her video and her channel down below where she did this on her toolbox. That video 
all of her DIYs were so gorgeous. So make sure that you check her out. Now I'm just going to kind of add a little frame to the front of this planter. So I just take my dowels and I'm just taking my miter shears and cutting these down and just trying to make sure that I get all four pieces the correct sizes. So your top and bottom piece should be the same size and then your two side pieces should be the same size. And then I just add some hot glue to the sides and assemble my little frame. And then I use some super glue on the back to adhere it to the front of my planter. So for the bottom of the box, you could use a piece of wood and you could cut it down. I just decided to go with a piece of foam board because it would be a lot easier to do that than to try to measure out and cut a piece of wood. <laughs> but if you wanted a wood bottom, you can definitely do that. I just cut out a piece of foam board just for the ease and the quickness of trying to get this DIY done. So I'm going to take some Italian sage paint from Folk Art and I'm going to give the entire thing one good coat. I did make sure to paint on the inside of the crate as well just in case you saw it and then you wouldn't see the natural wood through it. So I just painted all over. I did only do just one coat for the entire thing. Now once that is all dry, I'm gonna take some white chalk paint and I'm gonna go in the middle of that little frame that we built on the front. And I am just doing a very rough coat of paint on this. I want it to look really rough. I'm just going around the edges. I'm not trying to make it look perfect or anything. Just getting as close to that edge as I can without getting it all over the frame. And I just do that around the entire middle portion of the frame. And then I took this rub on transfer from a pack from the Dollar Tree and I am going to just cut this down as closely to those black lines as I can. One thing that I wish I would have done after the fact is maybe not even use that black frame that's on the rub on transfer. It just made it a little bit too hard to rub down in there because it was a pretty close fit to what this frame was. So if I could go back, I probably would have just cut that black frame off and just used the words on the inside. I did end up messing up a little bit with the frame portion of it, but in the end, I still think it turned out really cute. And I just use a popsicle stick to just rub all over and then I just peel up that top carrier sheet. If anything's coming up as I'm pulling this off, I just lay it back down, rub back over it and then keep pulling the carrier sheet off. And then for any of the parts that messed up, I just took a chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I just kind of dry brushed over it a little bit, try to make it look like I did that on purpose, that I messed up on purpose, that it was supposed to look a little bit rougher than it is. <laughs> and then I just added my foam board to the bottom, added some florals, and this is how this DIY turned out. For this DIY, you are going to take one of these bamboo cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. You're going to take one of the square beaded garlands from the Dollar Tree, and then you're going to take some scrapbook paper. This scrapbook paper is from my website. You can purchase this as individual sheets on there. I will leave that linked down below. So I just started by cutting off four beads from the garland. I'm going to paint the sides and the bottom portion of the bamboo cutting board in some Waverly white chalk paint. And I did just give it one rough coat, nothing too crazy. And then I'm going to hot glue those beads down to each corner and I'm going to turn this into a little riser. So I'm just going to add my beads, finish painting the bottom and making sure that I'm getting those beads painted. Once that is all dry, I'm just going to lay that down on the back of my paper and just trace the cutting board out on the paper. I'll cut that paper out, add some glue with a glue stick to the cutting board, and then I'll add my paper on top of it. And then any paper that's left hanging over the edges, and I just took my X-Acto knife and went around it and cut off all those little 
scraggly pieces and then I also took my sandpaper and went around all the corners to make sure they were all nice and smooth. And then for a finishing touch, I just took some antique wax from Waverly, went around all the edges, blended that wax in with my finger and just gave it a little bit more of a distressed look to it. And that's it for this DIY. Really easy and you end up with a super cute riser. For this DIY, I'm going to grab one of these standing picture frames that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to start by removing that middle frame. It just has some screws in it, so with a little flathead screwdriver, I'm able to remove those. I also sanded down where those holes were because it did have little ridges that stuck up higher than the frame, so I just used some sandpaper to sand those down. I'm going to grab some of my scrapbook paper. This is my welcome home pack from my website and I am just going to pick a piece out from here. I just grabbed this kind of faux shiplap wood look, trace that out with a pen and cut that paper out. Then I'm just going to add some glue to the back of the sign, add my paper and set that to the side. Now I'm going to take one of these laser cut wood pieces from Michaels. I want to say that this was under a dollar and I'm going to use this folk art Italian sage acrylic paint. Do you see a theme here? <laughs> this paint was kind of the theme of this video for the most part. And then I'm just going to give this one good coat of that color. Once that's done, I'm going to take my surface wax from Chalk Couture and the little applicator and I'm going to go over the entire sign with this wax because I am going to be using a decal over the top of this. And I prefer to add wax to anything that I've painted just so that I don't get any bleeding. I personally have found that that helps me a ton when applying my chalk paste to my transfers. So I'm just gonna set that to the side, allow that to dry for a little while. In the meantime, I'm gonna grab these quarter inch dowels that I picked up in a pack from Lowe's and I'm gonna take several of these out because I'm gonna make a little frame for around this sign. So I just lay my dowels out get them in the position that I want them. And then with a pen, I'm just marking where they need to be cut. And then you're just going to cut each of these pieces twice. So the top and bottom are gonna be the same size and then the two sides are gonna be the same size. Now I'm just gonna take my Waverly chalk paint and ink and give each of these dowels one good coat of paint. I'm gonna take my Country Kitchen Transfer from Chalk Couture. I'll leave it linked down below. Also, if you're watching this today, June 16th, Chalk Couture just said that they are having a flash sale with 50% off on a pack of 10 retired mystery transfers. So if that's something that you're interested, I'll leave it in the description box below with the link and you can check that out. But I'll also link this transfer down below as well. And then I just take my chalk paste on a little squeegee, squeegee that paste on over there and then pull up the transfer and it turned out gorgeous. All you're gonna do is take your transfer to the sink and wash it so that you can use it again. Now I'm just going to assemble my frame together using a little bit of gel super glue on all the ends and I just adhere all those ends together around the sign that I just made. And then once your frame is all nice and stuck together, you're gonna take that entire piece, add some hot glue to the back, and then adhere it to your larger sign right in the middle, and that is it for this DIY. For this DIY, you are gonna take two of these wooden 
planks that you can get from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to take some of my on the farm transfers from Dixie Bell. These are rub on transfers that I absolutely love. Also linked in my description box. This is what all of them come with. I've done a DIY with the big barn and I loved it. If you want to check that DIY out, I will leave it linked in my description box. These transfers are super awesome. I love all the little details. I just think they're so fun. Anyways, I am going to take my transfer, lay it on there, and I wanted my wood cut down quite a bit. I didn't want the sign as large, so there wasn't so much wood on each side, and I just took that out to my miter saw and cut that wood down. Now, I'm going to adhere this with some E6000 and gel super glue. I push them together, and then I set them them to the side to allow them to dry for a while while I cut out my frame. So I actually had these one inch dowels already at home, but you could use some of the smaller wood planks from the Dollar Tree for a frame if you wanted. I just prefer the square look to the frame, so that is why I just decided to use these instead. Now I just roughly measured how big I needed each piece for my frame and I just took these out to my miter saw and cut these down and then I grabbed some Waverly chalk paint added that to the back of my sign I did a really rough coat of this you can still see some of that natural wood peeking through and that's how I ended up keeping it so I just painted the sign and then I'm taking some water-based stain on all four of my frame pieces this water-based stain is no longer available it is from Craftsmart and they don't make it anymore but I have it in my stash I want to use it up any water-based stain or just regular stain that you want to use will do I just prefer water-based stain because it dries quicker it doesn't have a gross smell so I can do it in my craft room I don't have to take it outside and stain it so I just stain all four of my frame pieces now I'm going to set my frame pieces to the side to dry I'm going to add my Dixie Bell transfer to the front of my sign and I just tried to get this as center as I possibly could and I am going to use a popsicle stick to start rubbing this onto my sign. Now one way that I like to do this is just kind of to rub and then start peeling up the carrier sheet, rub some more, lift up the carrier sheet and this kind of allows me to see if any spots aren't sticking down all the way so I know where to rub over it and then I just kind of rub and pull as I go. And I think it turns out great every single time. Like I said, the detail of these is absolutely gorgeous. And that's why I love using them. So I'm just going to add a little bit more detail around the sign. I just take a piece of sandpaper and rough up all the edges and allow that natural wood to peek through on the sides and all the corners of the sign. And then I take all of my frame pieces and do the exact same thing. I'm just taking my sandpaper and running along each of those edges and then just do a really rough sanding on all four sides of all four of my frame pieces. Now I'm going to assemble my frame and my sign with some E6000 and then I do add a little bit of hot glue on each of the ends so that they can have that quick hold and then the E6000 will allow that long term hold. And I just add my bottom piece first, get that nice and stuck together and then I will adhere my top piece. And that is it for this DIY. This turned out super cute. I think this is adorable, especially if you like farmhouse decor. And as soon as I have my front entryway table set up, that's where this one's going. So the things you will need for this DIY is some scrapbook paper. This is the Farmhouse Living Scrapbook Paper Pack from my website. I'm going to take this sheet with all these cute little pictures on it. I'm going to use this Farmhouse Sweet Farmhouse picture. You're also going to need a laser cut wood piece from Michaels. Again, I think this is less than a dollar. And then you are going to take some fabric from the Dollar Tree. This 
farmhouse one is super adorable and I'm also going to take one of the bamboo cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. I am going to start by taking my bamboo cutting board and laying it on the back of my fabric and tracing it out with a pen and cutting that fabric out as close to the same size as that bamboo cutting board as I possibly can. You'll be left with a little bit of overhang, at least I was, that's okay. We can take some scissors and cut it off later. But I'm just going to take some Mod Podge and adhere my fabric to that cutting board using that Mod Podge. So I just use a really generous amount, spread it all over that bamboo cutting board, and then lay my fabric down on top of it and getting it as smooth as I possibly can. And then, like I said, going around the edges with some scissors to get all of those hanging pieces off of there. You could leave it like this and have it adhered to it. I decided to add another layer of Mod Podge over top of it. So all the fabric was nice and stuck down to my cutting board. And I just used a little sponge to apply that Mod Podge over the entire piece. Next, I'm going to take that scrap of paper and cut out that farmhouse, sweet farmhouse. And I am going to be tracing this on top of that laser cut piece that we got from Michaels because I didn't have anything in my stash that was quite this size. There are little square pieces that you can get from the Dollar Tree, little square wood pieces, but that one was a tad bit too small for this one and I wanted this to be the size of the picture. So I just cut that down using my miter saw out in my garage and then I'm taking some Waverly Wax and Antique and where the other sides are laser cut they have that dark finish on the sides and I wanted this to match. So I just used my Waverly Wax to paint the sides and then I also went around the top edge a little bit and blended that in with my finger just to give it a little bit more of a rustic look to it. Once I am done with that and I have glued it to the middle portion of my cutting board, kind of middle and down a little bit, not completely center, because I am gonna add some greenery to this DIY. This is just greenery that I got from Michaels and I took two little sprigs and hot glued them to the top of my sign, took some lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree, tied a really simple bow with it, glued it to the middle of my greenery, and that's it for this DIY. Really easy, and I think this turned out super cute. For this DIY, you're going to take one of these metal mason jars from the Dollar Tree. You are also going to take some scrapbook paper again. This is from the Farmhouse Living Pack off of my website. I'll have this link down below so that it is easy for you to find if you'd like to take a look at it. And I'm just going to take a piece of scrapbook paper from that pack and trace it out using a pen and my scissors and cutting that mason jar out on that paper. Once I have that paper cut out, I'm gonna use my glue stick to adhere my paper to my mason jar. And then again, I'm going to take the on the farm transfers from Dixie Bell. I'm gonna take one of the cows that it has that's really cute and I just add that to the very center, at least tried to get it, in the very center of my mason jar. And I'm just going to use a popsicle stick to rub that transfer onto the paper and then I will pull off that carrier sheet. I took this ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I wrapped it around the lid portion of the mason jar and just added some hot glue in the back. And then I found just a little piece of some lamb's ear in my stash and I hot glued that to the top side portion of the mason jar. And then to kind of cover that stem up a little bit and add a little bit more detail, I took some twine, wrapped it around the mason jar and the stem just over and over and over and tied a double knot in the back. And that is it for this one. This one was super, super easy. It took maybe 10 minutes to do and I think it turned out adorable.
This DIY is so simple and so fast. I'm gonna take one of these house picture frames from the Dollar Tree. I just removed the glass and the picture. I'm gonna trace out the glass on a piece of scrapbook paper that again, you can get from my website. And I just cut that scrapbook paper down to the size that it needed to be and put that back into my house and added the backing to the frame. Next, I'm gonna take these little stickers from the Dollar Tree. I am going to use the one that says Farmhouse and I'm just going to apply that to the very front of that glass, trying to get it into the center as best I can. Grabbing these greenery rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree, I just cut out two little pieces and I am going to use these for the sides of my house. I just center them where I want them, rub them down onto the frame and that is it for this DIY. So simple, so easy and I love how this one turned out. For this DIY, you are going to grab some metal tags from the Dollar Tree. I chose these coppery kind of hammered look tags. You are just going to need one of those. You are going to take these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. Now this video is the first time that I've used these transfers. I had never used them in the past and I actually really like them. I feel like they rub on easier than the other transfers from the Dollar Tree. The only trick to it is that you really have to make sure that you're holding your paper in place because it will move around super easily. So for this one, this was kind of an experiment, hoping that this would work because of all the ridges from that tag. I didn't know if this was going to go very well, but it actually turned out really cute. So I just used my fingernail or I tried to use a popsicle stick to just sit and rub that on to the tag. And once that was done, this is how it turned out. I think that it looks so pretty. I love it. So after I've done that, all I'm going to do is take a beaded garland from the Dollar Tree. I use one end and it already has some string hanging off the end. So I just use that to loop it through the hole on my tag and I tied that in place. And then I'm going to take this ticking fabric that's also from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut two strips out with it. I just kind of folded it in half and then cut long ways on there and I'm going to use this as kind of a mini tassel and I just take that fabric I figure out how long I want those strands to be and I cut that in half so you are going to be left with six strands of fabric I just kind of crisscross these all on top of each other and added a piece of twine to the very middle to scrunch these all together and then I used the string from the other side of the garland to attach the fabric to the garland I took another piece of twine and wrapped that around the top portion of the tassel and just wrapped and wrapped that twine all around several times you could make this as chunky or as skinny as you want it and then tied that twine in a double knot that's it for this DIY super easy again farmhouse easy cheap it's all the things I love Now for this last DIY, this one was a bit of a, an experiment, didn't turn out the exact way that I wanted it to. I definitely could have done some things different to make it a little bit better, but for this one, I'm taking a sign from the Dollar Tree, some rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree, and then also this 
vinyl from the Dollar Tree. So when I laid this vinyl out, it was a little bit more see-through than I would have liked and I tried taking off the paper off the sign. That didn't go super well, so I took some heavy card stock that I had and I put my vinyl down on top of my card stock and then I cut that card stock out. Now to make sure that I have it as close to that middle portion of that sign as I can get, I just lay that cardstock and vinyl on top of it and kind of push around the edges so that it leaves an indentation where I can then later go and cut around those lines. Now I'm just gonna adhere it using my glue stick and put that vinyl and paper right on top of there. And then I'm gonna take this rub on transfer that says you are a wild flower. Now if I would have done this again, I would have taken this maybe on another piece of paper because I feel like this kind of blended too much into the vinyl. So it was a little bit harder to see. You could also trace it with another colored pen if you wanted to, but I feel like if I I would have put this on another piece of paper maybe did like a ripped edge look around it and then put this on my sign it probably would have looked a little bit better but I still think it turned out cute and I wanted to show this DIY to give you some inspiration So that is it for my 10 farmhouse DIYs using mostly Dollar Tree products. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know what your favorite project was in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one. Bye.